I tell people all the time, I say, look, when I design your policy, I'm going to design your policy the same way I design mine. I have 19 of these things. I put about a half a million a year in premium and I buy at least one every 12 to 18 months. Yeah. I design your policy and, and I don't care. I don't care how big or how small it is. I tell people, I don't care if you make $10 an hour or $10,000 an hour, right? Everybody needs to break the bonds of financial slavery. They don't even realize they're in and start taking control of their own money. So I tell people, I say, I design your policy exactly the way I design mine. There is no secret sauce that goes on my policy that doesn't go on yours. The only thing that might be different is the premium amount that we're doing. Right. You may do a larger amount than me or a smaller amount than me, but it's all structured the same way. It's just the dollar amount. And the cool thing about this is you decide. You decide how much money that you want to put into the policy. I've never told a client how much to put in. You need to put this much in. a policy. No, man, you tell me the amount. You are listening to the Wealth Without Bay Street podcast a Canadian guide to building dependable wealth. Join your hosts, Richard Canfield and Jason Lowe, as they unlock the secrets to creating financial peace of mind in an uncertain world. Discover the strategies and mindsets to a financial future that you can bank on. We're pretty honored to be joined today by the uh, CEO, the founder of The Money Multiplier, also a co-author of a new book that I'm going to give Brent uh, the um, the thunder of introducing uh, to our audience. We'll also provide a link where people can access uh, Brent's new book. And so we're super excited to be joined today by uh, a gentleman who's been practicing this process of becoming your own banker. He's been educating the general public. He speaks at uh, live events, conferences, all across uh, North America. And so, Brent Kessler, welcome. Welcome to uh, Wealth Without Bay Street. Awesome, Jason and Richard. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here to share. <laughs> All I'm right. Well, forward to this. Let's get underway. Let's, uh, let's begin with maybe sharing with listeners, you know, what your journey has been with the process of becoming your banker up to this point. But before you do that, would you mind introducing to our listeners your new book, which we we want to congratulate you on. Congratulations on uh, writing a new book. Absolutely. It's called Mapping Out the Millionaire Mystery. Beauty. Mapping Out the Millionaire Mystery. And it came out um, earlier this year, in like March, March, April. And um, actually, I, uh, it's my colleague and I wrote it. He's actually my client, Chris Noggle. And I mean, he's my colleague now, but he's... Um, Actually, Chris has been my client for a long time. He's very active in the real estate world. He lives in Buffalo, New York, and um, he's had some TV shows on, um, you know, in the real estate, uh, so like industry. And his most recent one was on HGTV called Risky Builders. Hmm. And um, so, yeah, so like a lot of people here in the States, they know him, you know, when they hear Chris Noggle. Um, but actually, yeah, Chris was an advisor for 14 years for New York Life. Oh, and wow. um, Chris was introduced to me by another client of mine that's a, so that is also very active in the real estate world, a guy named Mike Baird. And Mike Baird lives in Salt Lake City, Utah. And um, he used to have a TV show called Flip Man Mike because he'd flip houses. And so, yeah, so... Um, Anyway, that was pretty cool. So uh, Chris, um, he came to an event that I did. It was like a three day event. Him and his wife came, he watched my presentation and like, I got to go check this out because I've been an advisor for New York Life for 14 years. And um, I've never heard it about this. This can't be right. This can't be true, this concept and how it works. But, you know, so now we are fast forward several years later. Um, Chris and his wife have several policies and um, the last TV show got canceled that he had called Risky Builders. Um, You know, so it was kind of sad for him, but kind of good for me because he said, hey, I want to start teaching this stuff too. 
you know, now that I know it. So Chris will tell you that he never learned any about this at the home office in New York life and how this works and how this concept works. So he'll tell you that I taught him everything that he knows about the concept, about how to become your own banker. So the book that we wrote, Mapping Out the Millionaire Mystery, was really because Chris said, we got to get a book out there on this. We got to get a book. He had a couple other books. In, in, and I was like, man, I don't have time to write a book. You know, <laughs> um, I, I mean, I don't have the patience or the time. He says, no, no, no. He says, it'll be good. He says, we'll do it, you know, this way. And, and actually, it worked really good because all I did was had to, okay, so like as far as to speak, I just had to speak and say everything right like about the book that i wanted to go into the book i was thinking i was gonna have to write i was gonna have to write a book and i'm like i'm not gonna sit down and write a book so i just did it over calls and zoom meetings and things like that and i just kind of told the story i told my story and how it worked and of course you know we talk about nelson nash in the book you know almost on every other page because if it wasn't for Nelson Nash and becoming your own banker, I wouldn't be here, right? We wouldn't be doing any of this at all. So I just like to say it's kind of a spinoff of his, I probably spend more time promoting his book in there than anything else, you know, that Likewise. Yes, <laughs> book becoming your own banker. And yeah. I just implement it and I show people how I use it. And we got some case studies in there and people of, you know, that they're like talking about how they use it and, and uh, stuff like that. So yeah, actually, I'm very, very glad I did it. I thank Chris for, um, you know, driving and, you know, saying, hey, we got to get it done. And um, it's been good, because we get a great response. You know, we get people that will come to us and say, hey, I read the book, you know, and um, I have it in like ebook form, too. So if it's okay with you, you know, I'll, I'll share the ebook with your listeners. Oh, um, thank you. Thank I'm you. Sure we appreciate that. Go on the website to get it. In the past, I've always just said, "Hey, just send me an email to Brent at the and I'll send you the ebook." You know, but however, they can go to the website too and get it. I just don't know how they get the ebook for, for on the website, but I'm sure my daughter, my assistant <laughs> Anna, will know. I'm not the I'm not the technical guy, but we'll, we can help. We'll get a link. That. We'll get a link. We'll put it in the show right. notes. Thank you okay. for doing that, Brent. I mean, that's amazing. What a gift! What a gift to provide to our listeners. So we just you know, we're so grateful for that. And you know, and and Chris, when you get a chance to listen to this, thank you for pushing Brent to getting this done, Absolutely. because that's wonderful. And and by doing that, you've helped share the message with so many other people. So we appreciate you for that as well. Yeah, no, he's awesome, man. He loves this stuff. He's very passionate about it. Um, actually, I'm going to Buffalo this next week um, on Tuesday. I'm going to be up there for the whole week, and we're just going to do a bunch of recordings. You know, a lot of. Uh, trainings and stuff that we can get out to the audience and the listeners and like uh, in our client you know i always say the more you get around the campfire and drink the kool-aid the better this stuff gets right so you just got to <laughs> stay around it you got to be around it um, because it's not um okay so the concept as you guys know becoming your own banker it's not a concept that's being taught you know just by our parents our grandparents, our friends, colleagues, and our coworkers, right? They're not teaching it because it's outside of the box thinking, right? Right. right. So um, you got to start doing something different, like, right? Like the uh, backward bicycle video. You guys, I'm sure, have seen that on YouTube. You know, it's in our a, show. It's in our show notes for every episode. <laughs> I, good. I show it before every presentation. I, I mean, I show it before every presentation. And if uh, time doesn't allow me to show that seven and a half minute video, I say, okay, this is your homework. After we're done, you got to go, you know, and watch this because this is a paradigm shift. This is not, I mean, this is, it's not normal thinking, conventional thinking about what people do with their money. Well, and if you, if you take us back to, you know, when that paradigm shift happened for, for you. So yeah. maybe share with our listeners, what was life like for you prior to implementing this process? And what has life like been since? Because I mean, your, your debt recapture example is so incredibly powerful. Yeah. So our listeners would love to hear about well, your sure. journey. Well, anyway, so like I'm actually a chiropractor, you know, I, I mean, I no longer practice chiropractic. Um, I mean, I'm still a chiropractor. And um, 
I haven't practiced since 2008. I own five clinics in the Kansas City area. I sold the last one in 2017. I had associate docs in all the clinics. Well, I was at a chiropractic conference in 2006, and um, I heard this concept being taught. My chiropractic colleague had brought in a speaker, and he came in and he spoke about this concept, becoming your own banker. And I looked at it and I watched it and I even bought the R. Nelson Nash book, you know, Becoming Your Own Banker. I bought it and um, I came home. Yeah, you got one. Oh, everybody's got You guys got one of those. <laughs> Absolutely. So I brought it home. And um, I heard the information, right? I heard the information. I'm like, man, that looks really, really good. That's, that is really cool. But there's no way. There's got to be something to it. It's too good to be true. It, you know? So I came home. I did nothing. I went back to my chiropractic life. I put the book up on the shelf. About two years later, almost, I go back to another chiropractic convention about 10 or 12 of my colleagues that were with me at the previous one in 2006 are now at this one. Well, they come up to me and they're talking and they're just going on and on about, man, isn't this banking concept the most powerful thing ever to build wealth, to pay off debt, to recapture, recycle all of your dollars, all without working harder, all without taking any additional risk, all without losing control of your money or changing your cash flow, simply adding one step adding one step in your financial life. So they were going on and on about this. And I thought to myself, there has to be something to this, right? There's no way that 10 or 12 of my colleagues are lying to me, maybe one or two, but not 10 or 12. So I came home and I told my wife, it was February of 2008. I said, honey, I said, we have to start implementing this in our life, right? At that time, I was hundred eighty four thousand seven hundred and eleven dollars in debt that's what i owed to the third party creditors now you're probably thinking how does a guy from kansas get to be almost a million dollars in debt i know if you're somewhere nice like vancouver richard that buys a very small house but in kansas it buys a lot right <laughs> most most well, likely like a condo made out of cardboard or something at or a broom a closet waterfront. yeah <laughs> So anyway, I had my chiropractic clinic. I had my student loans, chiropractic college student loans. I had the house that I lived in, um, had a condo on the Lake of the Ozarks between St. Louis and Kansas City. If you have a condo on the lake, you got to have what? A boat and a wave runner. Yeah. Can't have a condo on the lake without a boat and a wave runner. I'm also a pilot, so I had to have my own airplane. So it didn't take a lot to become a million dollars in debt. Well, I applied this concept, okay, the infinite banking concept, the way Nelson Nash teaches it, and I was able to pay that debt off in 39 months, three years and three months without working harder, changing my cash flow, taking any additional risk, adding awesome. one step in my financial life. So now I show people like, so when they go on to watch my presentation on our website, themoneymultiplier.com, when they go and watch my full hour and a half presentation, um, I go over the, uh, like an example of another client, right? So like, I don't go through mine because it's a little too long, right? For a presentation mode, but I go over another client that um, he showed up at our door with 12 third party debts and he had $470,000 of debt. Okay. And it was going to take him 214 months to pay all that debt off if he was going along the normal conventional way, but I show you how by applying this concept, he paid off those 12 debts total the total $470,000. It didn't take him 214 months. He did it in 61 months and he did it with a $160,000 outside injection and he kept his cash flow the same the entire time. So then I tell people, I say, well, yeah, so this guy paid off 470 grand in five years, right? And people say, well, how fast can I do it? And I say, it's totally up to you. You can go faster or you can go slower. I paid off 984 in 39 months. I just chose to go a little faster. 
Right. I, right. If I wanted to go slower, I could. If I wanted to go faster, I could. It's all dependent on you because there's no risk in this at all in the United States. I'm assuming Canada the same. There's no risk at all in this concept. The only risk factor, because in, again, in the United States, nobody has ever lost money in a whole life policy in a mutual company that pays dividends that's designed specifically for this concept. It's the very same in Canada. Go look it up. It's not yeah. out there. So the only risk factor is you. You are the only risk factor. And who do you know better than you, right? <laughs> So it's all how you treat it. It's all what you do. Like Nelson uses things like, don't steal the peas. Don't go in your own grocery store and walk out the back door. You know, if you borrow money from a bank, pay them back with interest, right? That's what you do without thinking yeah. twice about it. If you borrow from yourself, pay yourself back with interest. Treat your money the same way you treat a bank's money. Or better. It goes in and talks about EVA, economic value added, right? Um, anyway, I don't want to get off on a tangent, but I went to <laughs> Idaho. I went, but anyways, all right. So I went to Idaho the week before Thanksgiving. And anyway, I told you I'm an aviator. I live in an airplane community down here in Florida. It's called the Spruce Creek Fly-In. Um, it's in Port Orange, Florida. If, um, if there's any aviators on the call, they may know Spruce Creek. It's kind of just like famous for where John Travolta lived, right? So that's how people kind of know it. Well, anyway, back in June, the thing we did is we upgraded our airplane. We got one that'll go faster and higher and it's pressurized. As a matter of fact, I don't even know how to fly it. Our 19 year old son is the pilot. So he's the one that flies it. So awesome. I went out to Idaho the week before Thanksgiving because we had a house build out there at, in July and um, uh, dropped my wife off in Dallas at her parents. And I wanted to go to Idaho and then come back to uh, Texas for Thanksgiving. Um, so on the way out there, he's flying the plane. And I said, um, so, well, it's been about a year since I've read Nelson's book. It was last time I read it was before I did a mastermind event in Daytona Beach in January, at the end of January. And I read it right before then. I always, I, I always go and read the book right before I do a mastermind event, like a big three-day event, because I want to get my notes down. I want to get my thoughts, everything fresh. Well, it's been almost a year, 10, 11 months, right? And I, and, and so I, on the way out there, I say, I'm going to read the book again. And I'm, I'm just totally amazed. I can't even tell you how many times I've read the book but it's been well over 25, I know. I mean, probably more than that, but over 25. And every time I read that book, there's stuff in there that I either forgot or I don't remember, you know, or that's right. I, I'm not even telling my clients about this. You know, I'm not even telling people about this. I, I mean, every sentence, it just, it, 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 it's, um, again, so this book, Becoming Your Own Banker, you guys have to add that book to your wealth building library. The it late R. Nelson Nash, he you used to, get. to absolutely. He used to say two things. He would say, "One reading just won't do the job." And the more that you see this process, the more that you'll see you didn't see. Yes. And it, I'll tell you, he he was so accurate in both of those. <laughs> remarks. Yeah. Because much like yourself, I mean, we we find ourselves diving into the book, usually, um, whether it's before a big event or before think tank, we always like to read it on the plane, ride yeah. down and, and we're, we're, we're sharing, you know, you mean the, three, the three plane rides down that we have to the, take to get there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we don't, you know, own our own airplane yet. But it's it, Brent, like you're absolutely correct. It's going back to that message. And, and like Brent said, what we're describing, we're talking about the late R. Nelson Nash, who authored the books titled Becoming Your Own Banker, Building Your Warehouse of Wealth. He also co-authored the book, The Case for IBC. Yeah. All three of those books are great reads, but Becoming Your Own Banker is a must have uh, in your library. And so, so Brent, you know, coming through this journey and uh, being obviously um, probably quite stress-free now and leaving, living a very peaceful, uh, stress-free financial life, 
what would you share with listeners who are who are just, you know, people are hopping onto this podcast and maybe they're just catching us for the first time and yeah. they may have heard something about this. And what advice would you give to someone knowing what you know now? And this has come across your your desk. What advice would you give to someone who's just experiencing this for the first time? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, a quote by the late Will Rogers. The problem in America isn't so much what people don't know. It's what they think they know that just ain't so. So a lot of the stuff that you've been taught about wealth and money is a lie. It's not the truth, right? So this is the truth about money. Um, so look, um, and you know, so I know a lot of people, so they don't want to spend the time. Like I tell them to go watch my presentation. It's an hour and 40 minutes long, an hour and 40 minutes. Are you kidding me? You want me to watch an hour and 40 minute presentation? Yeah, I do guys. Cause this is about your financial life. Right. This is about not only the financial life for you, your spouse, your children, your great grandchildren and future generations to come. So you may have to turn off an episode of American Idol or The Bachelor, you may have to skip Bobby's um, soccer practice, or in Canada, a hockey game, skip the hockey game, right? <laughs> but you need to get this information, you need to see it, you need to be exposed to this information, right? I, I mean, and also, take action, right? Take you have to apply the knowledge Right, right. So just don't look at it and and read it. Now, apply it because a lot of people just look at it, they read it, and they never do nothing. Okay, it took me two years. Right. It took me two years. And now I'm on the phone talking to people about it. And they're like, well, let me think about it and call you back. I'm like, are you kidding me? You know, I'm showing you all this information. What is it about it that you don't get? But then I forget. Well, it took me two years, you know, right. But I mean, it is it is a life changing event. So I'm telling you, this is the best information that just can be provided out there to anybody, in my opinion, on building financial wealth and keeping it in your family. So there's no money being leaked out to other people. Go do your research, go do all the research that you want, but do it, get the research done. Go to all right. So like go to the website, the um the okay, so the infinite banking so dot org site and look at the all the resources, the readings, you know. If it's not, if it's if it's not just okay, so like as far as me you want to work with, or if you don't want to work with Jason or Richard, go to the IBC practitioner finder and find someone out there if you want to, but be careful you know, make sure you've got somebody that's actually doing this in their own life. Even if you find an IBC practitioner, you want to peel back the onion and see what they're doing. Because not every IBC practitioner is actually implementing it in their own life. And that's the key, I believe. Good I believe point. you guys might disagree with that. But you got to own the, a policy yourself, you got to be applying this yourself. Right. You have to have put some peas back on the shelf. That's right. Well, you That's have to right. know, you have to know how to use the tool, <laughs> right? Yes. Nelson used to say all the time and our, our regular listeners uh, know this is that you can put the best tool for the job in the hands of someone who doesn't know how to use it. And sure. not only are they not going to turn out any good work with the tool, they're likely going to break the damn tool. And so <laughs> Making sure that you're working with someone who's thoroughly familiar with the process. Right. It's one thing to have an understanding about the product, but it's another thing it all together to work with somebody who's thoroughly familiar with the process. And the best way to become thoroughly familiar with it is to practice it in your own life. That's and right. Brent, we've known each other for years. And yeah. what would you share with listeners who are, you know, scouring the internet and the YouTubes and the Facebooks looking for someone to work with what would you share about our team over at ascendant financial oh you guys are awesome man you know you guys i mean i know what you do i've been there to your uh to your presentations i mean you know i've come up before you know um so like to edmonton thank you for inviting me to edmonton in february by the way 
<laughs> well, we'll have you back during the summer months once we get the all clear. Inviting the Florida COVID. board to Edmonton in February, <laughs> oh, a year or two ago, whenever that was. No, I'm yeah. just kidding you, man. But yeah, I mean, so you guys are spot on. You eat, breathe, and live this stuff. You know, I, I know you guys love Nelson more than anybody that's out there. You know, um, you guys are just class act, A plus people, you know. Um, so, and again, the important thing is you practice it in your own life. You're doing this for your family, you know. So the stuff you're telling other people to do is the same thing that you're doing. I tell people all the time, I say, look, when I design your policy, I'm going to design your policy the same way I design mine. I have 19 of these things. I put about a half a million a year in premium and I buy at least one every 12 to 18 months. Yeah. I design your policy and, and I don't care. I don't care how big or how small it is. I tell people, I don't care if you make $10 an hour or $10,000 an hour right? Everybody needs to break the bonds of financial slavery. They don't even realize they're in and start taking control of their own money. So I tell people, I say, I design your policy exactly the way I design mine. There is no secret sauce that goes on my policy that doesn't go on yours. The only thing that might be different is the premium amount that we're doing. Right. You may do a larger amount than me or a smaller amount than me, but it's all structured the same way. It's just the dollar amount. And the cool thing about this is you decide, you decide how much money that you want to put into the policy. I've never told a client how much to put in. You need to put this much in a policy. No, man, you tell me the amount. How much do you want to put into the policy? It's your banking system. How much do you want to deposit into your bank? Is it a little bit or is it a lot? How much are you worth? Are you worth $2.50 an hour? People say, well, yeah, I'm worth two fifty dollars an hour. I'm worth way more than $2.50 an hour. Okay, so then the thing you're telling me is that you're worth paying yourself two fifty dollars an hour. They say, yeah, I sure am. I, I'm, I'm worth more than that. Okay, well, let's take two fifty dollars an hour. How much is two fifty dollars an hour really? Well, you work 40 hours a week at two fifty dollars an hour. It's 100 bucks a week, 400 bucks a month, $5,000 a year. So are you willing to pay yourself $5,000 a year? And then when I say it that way, they're like, well, maybe I'm only worth a buck 25 an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Let me rethink though. that. <laughs> but, but, That's fine. But, but, wasn't that the same the same conversation that that you had when you first got into this as a chiropractor and, and yeah. someone who was in a business owner, you know, isn't that kind of how you got started, Brent? It was based on a certain number of patient visits a day, wasn't it? It was. It was. How many patient visits a day do you want? How much is an average patient visit worth? It's 50 bucks. Okay. Are you worth two patient visits a day? Okay, that's a hundred bucks a day, you know. Uh, right? It's it's a hundred bucks a day, five hundred bucks a week or or yeah, or as far as how many days you work in a week, if you work five days a week, it's 500 bucks a week, 2000 a month, 25,000 a year. It's up to you. You decide. And after you start, if you say, man, I'm doing too much, you can always lower it. Yeah. You can always reduce the premium if you want to. Flexibility is built right you into the, the equation. Flexibility if you want to lower it. So <clears throat> probably the most important thing is, is in order to learn how to swim, guess what you have to do? Guess what you got to do in order to learn how to swim? Get in the water. You got to get wet. You got to get, <laughs> you got to get in the water. I'm not saying go in the ocean and dive right in. Start at the baby in with the little, um, those things that you put on your arms. What are they called? The water wings. The, the water, water wings. wings. Rich, you do know, you still wear those? In, start with the water wing. <laughs> I, I flounder quite a bit, Jay. I got to be <laughs> So start small. I'm slow, but I'm start worth waiting small. for. Start small. Uh, it, start somewhere is what we, you know, love to share with people. Just is, start. Uh, just you got just it. start. Because guess what? I kick myself in the rear end every day for waiting two years to start. Because guess what I did by waiting two years? Are, are you ready? I get mad every time I think about this, but I talk about it a lot because I talk about this every single day. But I waited two years to start because I didn't because I thought it was too good to be true. Well, by waiting two years to start, guess what I did? I cheated my family out of hundreds of thousands of dollars because, okay, so hypothetically, 
all right, let's say back in 2006, when I first heard the message, let's say I had 50 years of life left. Well, now I don't start till 2008. I don't have 50 years of life left. I only have 48 years of life left now. So I didn't give up year one and two because I always have to start. So year one and two is always going to be there. But I gave up year 49 and 50 because mm. I'll never get to 49 and 50. So I gave up the cash value growth. I gave up the growth of the death benefit in year 49 and 50. And the policy is most efficient when? Tomorrow. Tomorrow's right. more efficient than today. Right. Today's more efficient than yesterday. It's the way it works. It's not us telling you it works that way. That's the way it works. It's engineered so that way. Day is better than the day before. So I cheated my family out of all that money because they'll never get the cash value growth and the death benefit in the 49th and 55th year. Wow, that's powerful. And again, you know, Brent, um, we we can't thank you enough for the kind gesture of making your uh, book and Chris's uh, book that you co-authored together available to our listeners. Um, we're, we're very grateful for that. And it's no secret that you're very passionate about the message and that's really coming across. And when you think of, you know, the, the occasions that you had to, to spend time with R. Nelson Nash, the late R. Nelson yeah. Nash, could you share with listeners maybe a fond memory, one of your fondest memories of Nelson? Yeah, um, I remember him telling me one time we were in Birmingham, Alabama, and we were just getting done with dinner, getting up or something. And it was him and Mary. And, um, you know, so the thing that he said, he says, he says, he says, it's all the way that you think. It's all in how you think about things. You know, it's just your imagination and just it's everything is about how you think and how you look at things because you see the way that you see things now is, is not actually really what's going on you know so that was a, a, a and then also i i got the chance um you know so the think tank in february before he passed in march i was really happy to be able to do this but i pulled him aside i had my daughter at the first think tank ever in that february before he passed in March and of course we all had pictures with Nelson and everything. So that was, oh my gosh, I'm so glad we did that, you know, and got those pictures. But I just had took my daughter up to Nelson and I told him, and it was just us um, there. It was, um, again, there could have been someone else standing there, but I said, Nelson, I said, um, anyway, can I, so I talked to my daughter here and tell her what's going on. And I told my daughter, I said, Hannah, I said, look, I said, this man right here, he has totally changed our financial life. So now my daughter already knew that, but I don't know how she really knew it, but I really wanted to give it to her and say, if it wasn't for him, we would not be doing what we're doing. We would not be living where we're living. We would not be helping all the people that we're helping, you know? Um, he is the one that gave us this. He's the one that gave us this gift that we are carrying out and teaching and serving others with. And I just want you to know, Hannah, how important, you know, just uh, this man has been in our family for several years, you know, way before you ever just knew it when you were back still in diapers, you know what I mean? Yeah. And um, I was, I was, I was very happy to say that with Nelson present and with Hannah present too and it kind of I, and, I, and it kind of brought some tears to Nelson's eyes you know um because I, I I wish now you know I mean of course now that he's gone you know I I, I mean I wish I would have I wish I would have called him more and said thank you you know I wish I would have acknowledged him more I wish I would have you know stopped him you know in the hallway um as what you guys might know, you know, there was a period of time where I started g going to the think tank and then I didn't go for a little while. Yeah. And I regret that, you know, I apologized to David Stearns. I said, you know, I should have been here and I wasn't here because there was some other outside noise and voices that I was kind of listening to, you know? Um, so I'll, I'll never forget Brent uh, sitting uh, at the 
uh, rooftop restaurants in Nuevo Vallarta. Uh And we were sitting down and just all talking and, you know, sharing appetizers. And it was the weather, of course, was beautiful. And we were just having a great conversation. And I I remember you bringing that up and you had said, hey, you know, so how, how have the think tanks been? And how are things going? And, and so you, you know, you were already being pulled, you know, to, to want to come back and, and, uh, yeah. you know, be a part of the group and, um, and, and you did, and, but I'll, yeah. that, I'll never forget that. I'll never forget that. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So, so I, so I wish I would have never missed one, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it, it, it I mean, it's a must, it's a priority, you know, for us and just to be able to help and serve our clients better, you know, yeah. Um, because again, this is about always, always like discovering new things that Nelson is teaching us. You know, he talks about the arrival syndrome in the book, you know, no, man, we're always learning. We're always, always learning. Some people think they've been taught everything there is to know. And a lot of times the people we hang out with, you know, um, so they don't want to see us do better than them. You know, I mean, not that, I mean, yeah, there are some times that say, no, that's not a good idea. You don't want to do that. That banking concept, I've heard everything there is to know about whole life insurance. That's not a very good thing to do, you know? Well, you got to do your research for yourself and see what's going on because your friends sometimes will bring you down. And that's why I love getting together with you. I do a mastermind on the third Monday of every month that with some other IBC practitioners. And it kind of brings us out because sometimes we're in a bubble on our own island. And, you know, we're teaching this concept that's so outside of the box that we got to get around the like-minded people. And, um, uh, and, and yeah, so that's why I say, let's get around the campfire and drink the Kool-Aid. And sometimes it's your own family members that will drag you down. So I tell people, and I don't, and, and, and I know I make people mad sometimes when I say this, but sometimes you have to fire your family, at least temporarily, you know, you gotta, you have family members that just don't get it and you got to get them out of your life in this capacity. Yeah. It's all right to eat Thanksgiving or or go Christmas with them or whatever and have a meal and see them once or twice a year, but you can't let that energy bring you down and your own family members sometimes will bring you down, you know, because they have not, because I honestly believe if a person reads this book, if a person reads this book and they listen to the audio of it also, I like listening to the audio because I have a little ADD going on. So I don't, I have a hard time <laughs> sometimes reading, but if a, you actually read that book and just connect with somebody that's implementing this in their life, you know, like an advisor, like you guys, then there's no way that they would ever say, well, I don't think that's a good idea. I, there's just no way there's yeah. just no way it's such and, a good point and because we have the documentary film now which is such a blessing you know you can go to nelsonnashfilm.com and, and to make it simple and easy and you can spend 60 minutes learning about the impact nelson's had on people's lives it's it's not there to teach you about the concept it's there to help you connect and embrace what the possibilities of what that concept has done for so many people, including us on this call and all the, 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 the many number of people that we have touched and impacted because of it. And what an endearing thing to be able to have that opportunity for people who, you know, I've, I've heard from so many people, advisors looking to get into the industry, clients who never had the opportunity to meet him. They always say, boy, I just, I wish I would have had the chance to meet him. I watched that film. And he just seemed like such the nicest man, the most wonderful man. I just, I wish I would have had the opportunity to meet him. And, and they're so grateful and thankful that this documentary exists so that this thing, this journey that they're now stepping forward with on their life, embracing this concept, they have ability connect to connect with the, the, the gentleman who, who gave birth to this, this mindset and this idea and this, and this, this movement that they now are able to embrace and that will impact them positively for generations what an incredible opportunity to do that so there's the book there's the audio there's a documentary film there's learning resources literally just like 
they're, they're everywhere for us to tap into with the opportunity to fill our, fill our boots and fill our minds with so much knowledge and joy. That's right. Yep. So yes, so definitely go out and find out for yourself. Don't always like buy what you read on the internet. Right. You know, cause there's always something out there about anything that's, that's, that's going to be not good or like a negative, you know, like, I mean, so people can go and Google is infinite banking a scam. You know what? I mean, there's always somebody out there that will knock something down. Um, the guy that used to be the pitcher for the Boston Red Sox, Clemens, Roger Clemens, yep. he always said this. He said this quote. He said, he said, so the higher that your ass is up the flagpole, the larger of a target you become. You know, <laughs> that's, that, you know that's what he said. So, so you got to do your own research. I mean, the same thing with chiropractic. I mean, guess how many people, chiropractors, they're quacks, you know? I mean, I can tell you, I've seen things in the chiropractic profession of people that have gotten better under chiropractic care that they've spent months and hundreds of thousands or tens of thousands of dollars at the Mayo Clinic couldn't help them. It's all about allowing that innate intelligence, the hard bone off of the soft nerve, so everything can flow optimally in the body, right? Because if you got a nerve that's affecting, because the nerve goes to the organ, and if there's a problem problem with that organ, it may be because the because the nerve supply is not right. But it's a paradigm shift. It's a paradigm right. shift because that's not what we're taught. The thing that we're taught is go to the doctor, take a pill, and it'll get better. So are you telling me that the body is um, is in pain or disease because of the lack of medication? The body's not getting enough medication. You know what I mean? It, yeah. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. So a lot of times, you know, it, it, okay, so the thing I tell my kids is I say, watch what everybody else is doing in life. Watch what the masses are doing and you do the opposite and you're probably going to be right. I'll, so anyway, can I give you just a quick little story? Oh yeah, please do. Yeah. I was at a thing one time, my, it was my wife and I, and it was, it was this thing about success. Um, so, so like Zig Ziglar was there, Colin Powell was there, head football coaches, positive energy, Brian Tracy. It was all about positive energy and, and about thinking different and, you know, um, like all good mindset stuff. Well, at the break, and anyway, it was in an arena. There was probably seven or 8,000 people at the arena. So um, everybody went to break at the same time. They had the intermission or a 15-minute break or whatever. Well, guess what everybody does when they go to the event in the arena? There was a break. They go to the bathroom all at the same time. They got to use the restroom. Yeah. So everybody goes to go to the bathroom. So anyway, so my wife and I are going up. And there's a, and and then there's the bathroom. Well, guess how long the line is in the women's bathroom? I mean, it is like thirty to thirty five deep. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's a long line. So I was in an arena, right? It, it was like it was it was, it was it was like a hockey arena or basketball arena where it goes around, right? Yeah. Um. So I know there had to be bathrooms somewhere else. So let's just continue to walk down instead of standing in this line. So all we do is we walk up, like not even two minutes, 90 seconds probably. And all of a sudden, there's these bathrooms here and nobody's there. You open them up and there's just stalls everywhere, empty, a 90 second walk. So I'm like, wow, this is really cool. And you know, no way. So my wife and I go to the bathroom and now both of us are excited because now when we walk back, we're going to tell the people, hey, 90 seconds up there, all these open bathrooms, nobody's waiting. So that's what we did. And there was probably about 10 of them in the line because of, of the way we were standing, about 10 of them could hear us. We said, hey, down there, there's, you know, all these bathrooms, not one person got out of line. Not one person got out of line to go use the other bathroom. They wow. all stood. They all stood there. Like nobody else is doing it. I'm not going to do it. You know what I mean? So the point is, is watch what everybody else is doing and you go do the opposite <laughs> and you're probably going to be right. You're, and your bladder will thank you. <laughs> 
That is a really awesome story. And true, very true. thank you for bringing so much energy to, to our show. And, and, and it was such an honor to have you as a guest. And yeah, I thought um, we were going to have to turn you up for some reason, but you, you, you dialed in really nice uh, today, Brent. Awesome. Yeah, you're, you're the only guy on planet Earth, Brent, that can spike the levels on my Roadcaster soundboard here. <laughs> Um, well, no, it, I love doing this, man. I love sharing this. Um, and look, I'll, I'll come back anytime you want me. We can do a part two, part three, part four, whatever you guys, you guys want to do. But again, so you guys are awesome. And um, I'm telling you all your listeners out there work with Richard work with Jason. Um, you know, I mean, Jason, I've known you for years. I think what Richard, we've known each other for three years, at least now, maybe longer. Um, I know it's been a lot longer with Jason, but um, so like all my Canadian clients, and, and again, if it's okay to say, I just, any Canadian client I come just in tune with, um, I refer them directly to you guys. I, I refer every Canadian client goes to you. I had a client one time, he called me up and he says, hey, you know, they, they, they seem a little busy and it's going to be a, a, about a week or so before I can get on the schedule. Is there anyone else in Canada that you can refer me to? No, there's not. <laughs> I don't have anyone else. I don't know what happened. My light just went off. Um, I don't know so what happened and, with that. And you're we're, all good. We're incredibly grateful uh, for that. And um, I'll tell you, if you, it, for our listeners, make sure that you ease on over to the moneymultiplier.com website and be sure to have a look at Brent's presentation. You can view it 24-7 from any device that connects you to the internet. And Brent, when they get to the site, what's the easiest way to navigate to that presentation? Absolutely. So go to the website, themoneymultiplier.com, T-H-E, themoneymultiplier.com. At the top of the homepage, it says resources and just click on presentation. Perfect. Go to resources, click on presentation. It's, I have my full 90 plus minute presentation. It's also broken up into 10 individual sections if you prefer to watch it that way. And I have a downloadable attachment that you can print out to follow along with my examples. Awesome. awesome. I'm telling yeah. you, if you read this book, which is the Nelson book, I'll, so at this book, I will, all your listeners, all you got to do is, you know, go, or if, if you want to send me an email, I'll email you the ebook on that one. But if you read this book and watch this presentation, it is game changing. It is life changing financially. And I'll leave you with this. The late Warren Buffett, the late Warren Buffett, guess what he said? I think about this quote every day of my life. I'm not the smartest guy. I'm not the brightest candle on the cake. I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed. It took me personally, it took me 13 trimesters to get through 10 trimesters of chiropractic college because I kept failing classes. When I finally did graduate, it took me two extra years to get my license to actually practice in the state of Kansas because I kept failing part three of national boards and they only give me the, they only give you the test once every six months. So I'm not the brightest candle on the cake, but this is what I remember. I remember Warren Buffett saying this in October, 2008. Now, I don't know if that's when he said it, that's when I heard it. And I think about this quote every day of my life, and this is how simple it is. He says, if poor people would just start doing what rich people do, they wouldn't be poor anymore. <laughs> how much sense does that make? Powerful. It's good. Powerful. That's what we're doing. We're just gonna mimic and imitate what the wealthy do the, because the concept's not on trial. It's been around for over 200 years. Go look and see how Walt Disney built Disneyland. How did he get the money? Where did it come from? He couldn't get it from conventional means of financing. He had to get it from his policy. Go look at Ray Kroc with McDonald's. Look at Pampered Chef. How did Pampered Chef get started? A $3,000 loan from a lady named Doris Christopher in her Chicago home borrowed the money. She couldn't borrow it from the bank. She couldn't borrow it. She had to collaterally borrow it from her life policy in order to do it. That's right. Who knows if Pampered Chef would even be here if it wasn't for that policy loan. Look at Joe Biden. For any of you guys that have heard of Joe Biden, our, our supposedly presidential elect coming up, 
Joe Biden, I know the last time I looked, it could be different now, but the last research I did, which is a couple few years ago, Joe Biden had six life insurance policies, whole life policies in a company called Mass Mutual. And he tells you he doesn't even keep money in a conventional bank. He uses his policies to build as well. There you have it. Rich, take well, us through uh, uh, the hero question. With, with all that activity, and I, I feel like as I've been watching this happen visually, like there's enough movement happening. It's like you create your own wind, uh, Brent, and you're wearing a cape. In my mind, there's a cape flowing behind you. But now we know that not all heroes necessarily wear capes, but and you might not particularly think of yourself as that. Um, I might beg to differ, but every time you're creating value for other people, you're, you're benefiting them in some way, you're, you're making their life easier in some format, which I believe you do. When you think about that, who specifically comes up for you that you would like to be a hero to? Who would I like to be a hero to? Well, I mean, I want to be able to serve as many of God's children as I possibly can with this financial message. It is my mission. I believe it is my mission. I believe God put me on this earth to share this with as many of his children as possible. Now, sometimes I argue with God because he made me go through chiropractic school to, you know, to get here. I, I probably could have skipped that part. I could have done this a long time ago, you know, but it's like my wife says, she says, Hey, everything happens for a reason. How did you even hear about this? You were at a chiropractic seminar. If you weren't a, a chiropractor, you would have maybe never heard about it. But I believe this is my mission to serve as many people as I possibly can. And you know, my ever quote that I love, that I think about, the late Zig Ziglar. Now, see, I've known Zig Ziglar for a long time because I remember being in fourth grade. I was in fourth grade and I was born in 1967. So what this what must have been about? maybe nine or 10 years old, 76 or 77. There was a class in elementary school, um, which is a class I remember, because a lot of times our school, you know, we need to be learning this stuff in school. This is what we need to be. We need to have a, a, a class on infinite banking. You know, a, um, I, I mean, I would say a 12 credit hour class, but I'll just take three credit hours, right? We need to have a class on this. But anyway, all right, there was a class in school and it was called I Can. I C A N I can. And it was based on Zig Ziglar's material. Right. And I remember it. So I always followed Zig Ziglar ever since I was nine years old. And I went to that class. I was in fourth grade. However old I was in fourth grade. But anyway, here's what Zig Ziglar said. He said, help enough other people get what they want and you will end up getting what you want. Amen. So it's all about, it's all about others. It's all about giving to others. Now I know maybe a lot of you guys don't believe this, just what I'm about to say, but my daughter and my wife will tell you, I don't even, again, right? So like I do this, I am like an agent, I'm a licensed agent. So when someone wants to do this concept, they come and they buy a policy and I am their agent and I service the policy. So I get paid a commission. I don't even look at my commission statements. I don't even look at them. So I, I'm hoping they're accurate, but I never <laughs> look at them because I just keep, I, I just want to serve, serve and give and give. And it'll come in. If it's meant to be for me, it'll come in. So helping as many people as possible. But I would say my favorite client, my favorite client is somebody that is really struggling to get by. I mean, just struggling. They're, they're just really, I mean, I'll give you maybe an example of a husband and wife. They were working at Walmart, the distribution center of Walmart in Ottawa, Kansas. They had a couple kids, one in high school, one in college. They're, right? They got to pay for college. They got to pay for cars. And they're working these jobs. You know, they're going to work, grinding away, making whatever, 12, 15, 18, Ten dollars an hour, whatever they're making, and they're just everything that comes in. Everything that comes in is going out. Everything that comes in, there's more dollars that have to go out than what comes in. And I remember that family and them saying, "Man, what am I going to do to get out of this mess? What I, I got to change something. This is insanity, right?" So I said, 
Are you worth $2 and 50 cents an hour? Are you willing to pay yourself first? And that's what they did. They started with a policy at, I think, two fifty an hour or so. And then they just started eating away at that elephant. How do you eat an elephant? One bite one at a bite time. It's time. not all in one meal. And they started doing that. And now I have testimonies. Thank you so much for this, for introducing this. It drastically changed our life. We paid for the college, paid for the cars, you know, um, that we had. Um, we paid down on our mortgage, almost off on our mortgage. And we could have never imagined how we would have been able to do it without this concept. So it's a stories like that, man. You know, there's always... There's always a different story. And I, I, I just love to hear what's going on in people's life. And um, I can honestly say, and maybe I'll get a phone call after this presentation, but I've got over 2,700 clients that I personally have been able to serve since I've been teaching this since March of 2012. Over 2,700 clients. Not one of my clients is mad at me. Because people don't get mad at you when you're helping them build their wealth. And if they are mad at me, they haven't told me. They're keeping it secret. <laughs> but isn't that cool? Yeah, that's isn't that incredible. Cool? Right. Because they don't get mad at you. Yeah, it, we, very much the same in our experience where, you know, we haven't had a single client call us once in the last 12 plus years to say, I'm really frustrated that my policy values keep rising every day. It's really bothering <laughs> right. me. And that's part of the fulfillment of what we do because there's never a bad review with an, with an existing client. It, you're talking about the tool, of course, and how it's growing and, and all of that, but how they choose to embrace it. That's why we always emphasize the two most important words in the title of the book, Becoming Your Own Banker, are your and own. Yes. You know, we want to create clients that are independent, not dependent on any one advisor, we want to coach and, and educate people to think independently and to be able to implement this process in their lives and be able to take control. When Nelson talks about taking control of the banking function as it relates to your needs, he never said taking control of the banking function as it relates to your needs as long as your advisor keeps showing you how to do it. Like <laughs> you, you've got to, you have to embrace the process. Yeah. And so it's, man, again, such a pleasure. Thank you, Brent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, we will have you back. We promise. Uh, Richard, any uh, closing remarks before we uh, cap off this amazing episode? You know, I, the, the final thought I would have, <clears throat> other than just thank you, Brent, for sharing with us is that really take heed of some of the message that Brent shared with us today, if you're listening to this in and if you're hearing this for the first time, or maybe you're hearing it for the second or the third time, and you've already got that book on the shelf somewhere, go and find it, go and dust it off. Maybe you've been doing this for a while, but you haven't been engaging in the process enough. And you're, you're happy it's there, but you're not getting the practice that you really feel you could to be to to amplify it. Go grab your book, dust it off, start reading, start reading, start reading get engaged in your financial life as more the more you're engaged, the more money you the more you manage your money, the more money you have to manage. Yes. On that note, thank you both, gentlemen. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure, guys. I love you guys. We love you too, man. And uh, for our listeners or people who are visiting us for the first time, make sure you tune in. Watch the next video. It's going to be in the playlist. You'll see that right next to the one you're watching now. And uh, continue to grow, continue to learn, and we'll be here to serve you. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Wealth Without Bay Street podcast, where your wealth matters. Be sure to check out our social media channels for more great content. Hit subscribe on your favorite podcast player and be sure to rate the show. We definitely appreciate it. And don't forget to share this episode with someone you care about. Join us on the next episode where we continue to uncover the financial tools, strategies, and the mindsets that maximize your wealth.